Welcome to the day 5 video which covers section 4, solving logarithmic functions. As you can probably guess, today we're going to solve logarithmic functions. So basically we're going to solve equations that have logs in them. You should be able to do the entire video today without a calculator. So there's nothing really tricky, we're just going to jump into a few examples. So let's look at example number 1. So we have this log is set equal to, to x. Anytime that you have a log equation, you really want to switch it to an exponential. So in this case, we get 6 to the x equals 1 over 36. Now, this we have solved for. We need to get the same base on both sides. So on the left side, we have 6 to the x. 1 over 36 is just 6 to the negative second. Now, because my bases are equal, I get x equals negative 2. Okay, that was it. It's that simple. Now, the process is going to change a little bit depending on where x is. So in example number two, instead of x being on the right side of the equation, x is the argument. The first step is still the same. Write this in exponential. So I have 36 to the power 3 over 2 equals x. Okay, in this case, I don't need to get the same basis on both sides. x is already alone, so all I need to do is simplify that left side. Okay, so if you remember from before, I'm going to rewrite this in radical notation. That 2 is what goes outside. So I have the square root of 36 raised to the third power equals x. Okay, now the square root of 36 is just 6, so this is 6 to the third equals x. Hopefully you know that 6 to the third is 216. So I get x equals 216. Okay, now there's one more spot that x can be. If you look at example number 3, x in this case is in the base. Again, first step is still the same, write it in exponential form. So I get x to the power 3 over 2 equals 27. Okay, now in this case, I can't get the same basis on both sides because I don't know what x is. I'm trying to get x alone, so I need to figure out how do I get rid of that exponent. The way to get rid of this exponent is to raise to the reciprocal power. Now if I do that on the left side, that means the right side I need to raise to the 2 thirds power. So the 3 half and the 2 thirds cancel and I get x equals 27 to the 2 thirds power. And now this I just simplify like I did in example number 2. So this is x equals the 3 comes outside and then the 2 is the final power. So I have x equals the cube root of 27 raised to the second power. Now you should know that the cube root of 27 is just 3. So this is 3 squared 3 squared is 9, so I get x equals 9. Now, if you do not remember that the cube root of 27 is 3, remember that this is how you figure it out. 27 is 9 times 3, 9 is 3 times 3. So remember that the cube root of 27 is really just the cube root of 3 to the third. Those 3's cancel, this 3 is what goes here. So that should be a review, hopefully you remember that. But that's basically all that this section is doing. You're going to switch to exponen exponential form from logarithmic form, and then you're going to solve for, for x, depending on where x is. So right now, I would like you to um, pause the video and try example number four, please. Come back when you are finished. Okay, let's see how we did. So first thing that you should have done is switch this to exponential form. So I get x to the third equals 64. Now I need to get rid of that third power. So I have two options. I can either take the cube root or raise to the reciprocal power. I'm going to take the cube root. Okay, so once I take the cube root, the cube root and the third power cancel and I get x equals the cube root of 64. Now we need to figure out what is the cube root of 64. Well, some of you probably know right off the bat that that's just equal to 4. If you don't know that, you're going to need to break 64 down. So 64 is 16 times 4. 16 is 4 times 4, so I have 3 4s. So this is really the cube root of 4 to the third power. That third root and then the third power cancel, and that's how I get 4. So hopefully that one went well. 
Now I would like you to pause the video and do example number five, please. Do not go on to example six. Just do example five and then come back. Okay, let's see how we did. We get x to the four-thirds power equals 81. Now, this is similar to example three. I need to get rid of that four-thirds power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise to the reciprocal power, so the power of 3 over 4. When I do that on the left side, my powers cancel and I get x equals 81 to the power 3 over 4. Now you don't have a calculator for this, so you need to write this in radical notation. So we get x equals that 4, since it's in the denominator, goes out in front, and then that 3, since it's in the numerator, is the last power that we do. Now, we need to remember, what is the fourth root of 81? Well, 81 is 9 times 9, 9 is 3 times 3, and 3 times 3. So really, this is the fourth root of 3 to the fourth raised to the third power. Now, 3 to the fourth because there's four threes. Now, the fourth root and the fourth power cancel. So I get x equals 3 to the third power, and then 3 to the third power will give us 27. Okay, so you have one last example to do. You have example number 6. Log base 4 of 32 equals x. Pause the video and try this one on your own. Okay, let's see how we did. First thing that you should have done is write this in radical notation. Or exponential notation, I mean. You get 4 to the x equals 32. Now this is similar to example number one. We need both sides to be in the same base. Now there's no way to write 32 as a power of 4. So I can't do 4 squared equals 32 or 4 to the third equals 32. So that tells me I'm going to need to rewrite both sides. Now 32 is 2 to the fifth power. There's no other way to write 32 as a power. Okay, so then I need to think, how can I write 4 as 2 to a power? Well, 4 is 2 squared, and then I still have that power of x. So on the left side, this gives me 2 to the power of 2x. On the right side, 2 to the fifth. Since my bases are the same, I can now set my exponents equal. So 2x equals 5, so x equals 5 over 2. Okay, so that was it. That was solving, exp solving logarithmic functions or logarithmic equations. This is really nothing new. You just take your equation, you write it in exponential form, and then you solve it. All of these you've seen before. The only part that's new is switching from the log to the exponential form. Before we leave for the day, you have one last example that you are going to write down. This is the example that you need to complete for class tomorrow. The example that I would like you to solve is log base 9 of 1 over 27 equals x. When you come to class tomorrow, I will be checking, or your teacher will be checking to make sure that you have this problem completed in addition to the previous six problems. Good luck!